Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Plus Three Futures and Commodities Show. We are recording a couple hours before the close on Friday, the 12th of January. My name is Ben Maldonado, and as always, I'm here with my partner, Barry Hedarachi. Barry, two weeks in January, done. Already done. Like, Unbelievable. Like, like it didn't even, you know, it was like a sort of a, uh, like a ninja, I was going to say, <laughs> <laughs> you know, yeah. just kind of snuck in two weeks. What's what's unrefutable is that this 90 is certainly uh, certainly something interesting here. It's not, uh, the ES is just not giving it up yet, but it's also not able to get over the 90. So, yeah, we'll talk about that for sure. Yeah. I mean, I think today uh, there's only one commodity I have to to cover, which is Nat Gas. Barry, as usual, is going to cover ES, bonds, gold, crude oil, the dollar, the euro, and copper. Um, so we'll spend a lot of time on those today. And no better place than to start at the 90 with ES. Speaking of 90, take a look at this. See this 450 right there? Mm -hmm. That's... Five squares of 90 yep. coming right up into the high. Mm -hmm. And then we have 720 from the high from 2021 yep. high. That's coming right in here. Yep. So it's not like it doesn't have any, even the normal cycles. Right. Hanging around, right. So so there is some stuff there. And let's take a look at what's what happened here. So we were looking for a lower high. That's where we left it off last week. Mm-hmm. And we saw on the first drop, we came into really the top of 72. So that see. support zone, yep. Let's review that really quick. Show you guys that right there. Mm -hmm. Okay. So that's important notice. And so is that, which is quarter of the square of 72. Mm -hmm. Okay. Then we go back to the 90. And the 90 seems reasonable here because of the 45. So... We're good. And we got all these other multiples of 90s coming in there degree-wise from this high mm -hmm. and that low. I would break it down like this. From here, normally what has to happen is if the square is good, like if we ran up into it hard and it squared out, we would get a quick move down. And if the market is weak, maybe one or two days up and then, then roll over. Roll over, right? Mm -hmm. And... And we talked about this earlier. If you guys go back, you can see how that happened in the past. Like here, going back to 2021, you know, we had the high come in, false break, drop. You know, we had a two-day counter trend and then drop, drop, right? Mm -hmm. So that two-day counter trend kind of thing is the thing we're, you know, the pattern we're looking for. And here we had one, two, three days, outside day, inside day. So that's more of a, consolidation right yeah yep now is that distribution mm, could be kind of because you know the volume internal volume is not all that great i'm talking about stocks moving up versus down mm -hmm. it's kind of holding flat so not a lot of fanfare at this point all i can and you know the cash cash went up and made a new high mm -hmm. you know, that's the thing to look so here let's go back to you know this is our old cash chart we were looking at and this is important because what we did here could be a false break could be yeah okay could be so we're just keeping an eye on it so there it is if that's the case we really need to take out today's low next week okay mm -hmm. so that has to happen now just like on what i showed you guys about the square of 90 you know we came down and we tapped that 72 we came down and tapped this 4684, mm -hmm. which has nothing to do with the square 72. It was just a division that I picked up from the move from October to um, late November, that move. Mm -hmm. Okay. So we, geometry wise, we, we, we stopped there, rallied, made a new high. So noted. Let's get back to the uh, daily e mini. So I would say here, what has to happen is either we take out today's low. In that case, we can expect the market to go lower, at least test the one by one. Or we're going to break higher, settle above 48.51 and establish a new zone above 48.51. That means this cycle really didn't get traction. And what that really means is another, you know, we have a lot more to go. 
Mm-hmm. Bigger uh, cycle. Bigger cycle setting up. And that can happen during, like, if there's pressure for war, for example, you know? Mm-hmm. I remember in the past charts, you know, we started bombing here and there. Market just started going straight up, you know, climbing that, what do they call it? Wall of, uh, wall wall of worry. worry. Yeah. Right? That kind of a scenario could happen here. So we have to be mindful of that. And so those are the two ways. Well, there's always a third way, which is that we consolidate between the 72 and the 90. You know, that would look something like this zone here. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And what that would give us, I mean, we don't know how long it'll consolidate, but if it does that, that's going to give us a complex complex two still leading to a three at some point that's really all i want to add to that because there isn't a whole lot more it's either gonna, because we're right at the line you know if it was somewhere in the middle of nowhere we can come up with a lot of different scenarios but here you know we cycle expired 81 i mean 48 51 is really the level and we we're sitting right on bumping around it didn't really make a new high cash made a new high which could be a false break Mm -hmm. now if it's not a false break it's an early sign a lot of capital flow coming in and you would think it would show up in the dow but it's not you know you can see how flat the dow is this is what Mm -hmm. i meant like it looked like you know the internal volumes were kind of you know bulls versus bears were kind of flat and you can see it here in in the dow so the Dow doesn't look all that positive, right? <laughs> it's kind of like... It looks like it's waiting for something. Now, what happens with these 90s is it's waiting around. And, you know, it didn't sell off after the square, which is normally, you know, if it's really going with a bang, you know, it, it hit the mark and it'll sell off. But if it's hanging around right under the 90, something else is happening. Mm-hmm. Like I said, it's either longer consolidation leading to, you know, we'll have to wait to see which way it leads. Like I said, if it leads to above 90 here, that would tell us we're clearly going higher. So that's around, we got to settle above like 38, 38,200. If we can get above that, mm-hmm. we're clearly going higher. If we don't, either we consolidate for a while, and the way that end is consolidate, we break to the upside, consolidate, false break, we break to the downside. And then right. we do. then we start the whole process of lower high again. All right, so that's we'll walk that one out. So that's that. There isn't a whole lot more I want. I need to add to that. I think I covered it. So here's a 30 minute chart that we always look at. And if you guys want to look at the longer picture, I mean, here's um, this is the October low. Mm-hmm. This is how we kind of got there. Not like a you know burning bull market, sort of staggered up here. And even once we got here, you know, it's kind of staggering around. But now, so what we left this week was basically, you know, you know, the, the whole point was if we can hold above 47.90, we were expecting it to at least go up and tag 48.18. And if we can get above 48.18, well, you know, that opens up quite a bit. Pretty much the same story that we're seeing uh, on the daily, right? If we can mm-hmm. settle about that 48.50 area, we can go higher. But here in the 30-minute, we're looking at, you know, smaller time slice Mm -hmm. so it's really we got to settle about that that'll give us the first sign otherwise we slip in and we're going to consolidate in here a little bit longer and one of these has to give out and and we have the bracket pretty well yeah that's a good bracket right because um you can see reversions i mean reversions right in here somewhere within Mm -hmm. the bracket Mm -hmm. and well yeah that's what we're looking for all right, so that's it. That's all I have to add for the e mini. I wanted to keep it like really simple yeah. and short and sweet. Do you want to add anything to that? Did I miss or any questions? No, I, I think I think you got it. It's 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 at a decision point, and we just don't know which way the decision is yet. Mm-hmm. But we know what to look for. We know above yeah. forty eight fifty is a one story. Yep. And if we start slipping down, if we take out today's low really i think that's really the because it's the inside bar mm-hmm. and if we slip below the low which would be uh 48 20 48 22 mm-hmm. then we can, we can probably look for further downside so that's a thing for that well that's good 
So let's move on to the bonds. Well, bonds are behaving okay. We were looking for it to trade below the square 72. We were looking mm -hmm. for it to be below 124 ideally, and we are. And we had this block of support. It's above that. So we're also consolidating within that box. And not much to do from last week. We're in the, pretty much the same place. <laughs> Anything you want to add to the bonds? Uh, just that we had an inside week, so that supports exactly what you're saying. Not much happened. Mm -hmm. So we'll we'll watch the same we'll watch the same levels. You know, 120 for the upside, 19 and a half to the downside. And it really, is... if we get to 19 and a half, I think then we're probably just going to roll over because that sets up an A B C D down. Yeah, it's setting up a, a potential fast move down. That's yeah. for sure. So 121 would be the first sign. You know, that's the one. If we take that out, right there. So we'll look for that. But for now, not much. It's, it's kind of a slow week, you know, in, in a sense, in some mm -hmm. of the markets. So looking at the weekly bonds, we, well, like you said, we have a sort of inside bar, not yep. much happening. Not much happening. Inside this week. bars in this kind of a situation, it's very bearish. Yep. So, you know, if we take out today's low, it's funny because that sets up for both, right? The S&P and bonds absolutely does and let me show you what happens with inside bars i mean we really have to watch them when they happen because see that right there that's an inside bar right there where the red mm -hmm. circle is mm -hmm. and you know we came up in here sort of a double top lower high inside bar perfect place to get positioned or the next day when the low gets taken out and boom. There we go mm -hmm. inside bar boom inside bars boom inside bar right yeah yeah yes does it his inside bars here boom so you have to you, you know bonds show a lot of inside bars often and if they're at critical spots we really have to watch them so let's see how that goes otherwise it's same as last week we're you know we're kind of we have resistance we have overhead in this blocks especially below 128.07 um so we'll follow through with that. Mm -hmm. Anything you want to add to that? No, just yeah. just what you're saying. We're setting up for that fast move. If we get a lower high, yeah, for sure, right? That's, that's if, that's if we can't make, you know, if we can't get back up to that seventy-two, we're mm -hmm. that's that's a good setup for a fast move lower, right? So here's crude. Again, you know, what did it push up against and brush up against? You're you're seventy three fifty all week. It's, it's the same level, you know. Yep. Talk about I mean reversion. So here we are, and today, this morning, you know, bumped up a little bit, came down, didn't take out yesterday's low, so we're hanging in there. But you can see the buyers came in, right? Pushed up a little bit based mm -hmm. on news or whatever. So mm -hmm. it's it's really stuck in this triangle, you know. This you can well, see that's the thing, you know. I was I had the triangle drawn in on another chart. If we, you know, it's really, you can even draw it like that. Yeah. I mean, it kind of opens up to both sides, but yep. as long as the lower line is held and long as these lows are held, you know, pressures to the upside, no question about it. I mean, thinking like a criminal, they could, they could sweep the bottom, you know, break out of the triangle to the bottom, do a false break and then rip it higher. I could see that happening. I was when I was looking at the crude for review. That's kind of what I was looking at. Is you know uh -huh. maybe there's one more push lower. Yeah, yeah, that could be. It's funny because all the energy stocks are kind of doing the same pattern, right? Is that right? Yeah, yeah, they're doing a similar pattern, and because they put in a low right around early December and and mm -hmm. rallied hard and pulled back. And a lot of and here's the thing: this is the futures market, but a lot of the energy stocks didn't make the higher low this low you know they made much higher higher lows and they're maintaining that so something is up um and even you know look at crude it's it's getting pushed it's getting pushed and and we you know almost got above 73 and a half so let's watch this closely 73 and a half really is the number now we're going to watch it to see if we can settle above that or not i wouldn't be selling this thing at this point it's just a little too dangerous i think risky mm -hmm. But if we can manage 7350, I think it really opens up the upside in, in a good way. And to your it's point, we, we we did have a weekly up bar. So 
Yeah, yeah. And, you know, there are times when you really want to watch crude. And this is probably one of them. But you want to wait for a little bit of clarity, right? Yeah, and uh, not get chopped up because of all the news. And I think the weekly was showing something really similar. I mean, the buyers kept coming in. You mm -hmm. know? So if you look at the weekly, we have higher lows. Okay, so that's positive. And you can see your triangle is still there. Mm -hmm. And we're just waiting for it to get above the number. <laughs> yeah. Get above, get above uh, the square. Again, here's the thing. You know, it got above below the square. Really didn't go down. Went down three-fifths, came back up. And higher lows ever since so gently gently there's there's buying pressure in, built into that and um so we'll see how that goes you guys know the numbers now gold held the trend Sim line similar story huh yeah very similar um we we we, we held the 50 percent very well because it was well above that mm -hmm. and we held the trend line which is the one by two and well, you know, it, it's floating in there. What the thing to notice is the price. <laughs> We're mm -hmm. at two thousand dollars above two thousand dollars, two thousand and fifty dollars for gold. Yeah, we're near all time highs, very close, and that doesn't happen if there's no demand. Right. So something is up. Uh, I would watch gold closely i think it's, it's we might get to a point here soon we can day trade it <laughs> like yeah. in the old days um but the place is good it looks it's holding you know we keep talking about holding about 2000s positive so that looks pretty good uh if you look at it gold weekly we just need to get above the 50 percent of the square which happens to be about 2058 yeah, my monthly half square is 2056. So that's an important price area for sure. Yeah, yeah that's a really important price area. And you can, you guys can see, you know, we're coming from 2001. And if you look at it, you can, you can see we're holding well above these highs in 2011. This is really the key here, right? We're holding well above that. So that's where we get this 1881, 1919 kind of bracket. Mm -hmm. Well above that. And we came and tested it and whatever got back above. And now we're holding about 2,000, which is really that level of support here. I mean, the more recent support. So it looks okay. It looks good. It doesn't look like gold's in a bear market, you know? No. Like laughing about gold. <laughs> Nobody's laughing when he's close to highs, all-time highs. <laughs> no. And we're that close. We're really close. And it has the potential to run. And uh, so watch it closely. Mm-hmm. We'll get back into the daily charts, take a look at copper. Copper slipped below. Like I think we found this high in the weekly chart because it completed we this. Yeah, we completed mm -hmm. that move. Mm -hmm. And last week we talked about how critical the 50% of the move is, of the square is. And we can see how we slowly got into it. And here's a really low, low range day bam bam twice came back up again nope so it looks like we're going to consolidate in this range which copper seems to really like to do if you just look at that between these two lines you know yeah it's really really there and broke the trend line so let's see let's let it consolidate not much like you know it's kind of like you watch the, the commodities that are running you know if they're going sideways you're not that concerned you wait no we we'll just wait wait for and, the setup yep and that's what we have to do with copper. Wait for it to set up. So here's that completion we talked about on the weekly basis. And really now the critical trend line is really here. You know, mm -hmm. we, we kind of did a false break out of the out of the can't really say it's a false break until we take out, you know, let's say 364, 365. So mm -hmm. as long as we're above that, everything is okay. This is sort of a normal pullback. And when we get into that range, we can let me drop the line in now. So, I think 383 was your chart was the key number, and I have 381. So it's right in that area. We got to get above that. Right. And for support, let's look at 364 and a half. Seems like the area. Mm -hmm. 
that's the weekly. Let's go back on the dailies and what do you cover? Are you covering silver today? No, no, no. Okay. It's just not. It's not ready. <laughs> yeah, but not I do. I, but we can talk about a key level in silver if you want to. Okay. Yeah, not much. Not much for silver. I can. I can just pop. The, I haven't even uh, made up the chart because look at this. This is why we're not talking because there's not much. Uh, yeah. going on. <laughs> but put put your cursor on twenty four fifty nine. Mm -hmm. That's the key level. Yeah, there you go. If we we get above that, then then we've got uh, twenty four fifty nine. Yeah, there you go. We get above that level mm -hmm. and can sit on top of that, then we're in business, right? Because you can see, look for the last few years. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, we've only poked above that a few times. We couldn't sustain it, so we got to get above that, sit on it, and then we can really move. Mm -hmm. Yeah, not much for now. It just, uh, yeah, not much to do there. No, Some, these things have to trend. <laughs> yep, and it will. It was yeah, just it will. It will. it's winding up now and just uh, you know creating the energy to have a nice mm -hmm. breakout. Yep. Take a look at the dollar. Not a now. Take a look at the dollar. Your level has been perfect in that thing. Mm -hmm. All week we've been wrapping around this one hundred two and a half. Wrapping around that, and we're holding above the uh, sort of our buffer zone here. Mm -hmm. We didn't dip into that. So this overall is positive, right? So you know you can look at it like a one, yep, complex two, with the three to go. Yep. So I would I would watch this very closely. I would look at there's a little triangle here on the intraday chart. You guys can draw that triangle out, right here. So when that triangle breaks, I think I think it's good to go. Mm -hmm. um, unless it breaks to the downside, then we have to look for where that higher low comes in. Yeah. But the dollar is kind of setting up very quietly. And uh, so we'll watch. We'll watch progress because we did do sixty down. You know, the dollar is sixty day cycle or any multiple of thirty has been working really well. So here we did sixty down, and you know we got bounced, and clearly it's holding fairly decent space off the low. Mm -hmm. So let's let, let it um, come to its own. <laughs> right. Some things need time, you know. It's like that bamboo you have to water for five years or whatever. <laughs> you know, right. gotta, gotta yeah. give them space. Yep. Um, well, the weekly, you know, we came down to the 90. We tapped it, bounced. Got your higher low, too. Higher low. We got an inside bar. It's a little complicated. If we can uh, sort of maintain this trend here, we can be in good shape. Otherwise... I feel like, you know, we definitely have a lot of space to consolidate, you know, in here mm -hmm. uh, versus just run. But the funny thing is, if you look at how everything is set up, um, they're all set up where they could move quickly. <laughs> yeah. I mean, and, and if we just tie them together, you, you got a strong dollar set up, weak uh -huh. bonds set up, uh -huh. and potentially weak stock market set up. And the and and the gold is holding pretty well. And the gold firm, yeah, yeah. And the crude, again, it's in a place where it could run. Yep, it held support the sixty four area, right? So and the gold that, and crude would point towards geopolitical instability of some kind, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And then the uh, the weak bonds would be inflation, which would negatively affect, positively affect the dollar, and negatively mm -hmm. affect the market, stock markets. The funny thing, you know. I was looking at some of these cycles and the, the geopolitics are in play, fully in play this year. Mm -hmm. And probably between here and May, let's say, you know, it's almost worth, I'm not recommending this, but it's almost worth being long vol, you know, for the next few months yeah. because yep. it, it's just there, man. I haven't seen a better time to for be- For chaos. For chaos, exactly. So yep. it's just there. And if it's not great, you know, we have peace and everything's cool. Right. Uh, otherwise, but the, just the way the commodities are kind of set up, like they're cocked and ready to go, and holding the, you know, it just looks like it could just go any second. And 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 what I mean by that is they don't have to reach a certain level to get ignited. You know, like they're ready, they're ready to just pick up and go. Mm -hmm. Sometimes the markets you look at, you know, like we say, ah, oh, it's not ready yet. It has to get over this level. Yeah. Yeah. But here, everything's over that level, <laughs> <laughs> right? Or under that level to run. You know, they're both. They're all set up above the 
critical level. So, but it's like we're in suspended animation because they're not they're not going yet. They're not going, but they're holding. You know, yeah, so like, oh, wow. they are. Yep, it's a holding yeah. pattern. Yep. So because of that, I wouldn't let these quiet um, periods we've had kind of fool us into some kind of you know lull us into a nap or something. True. All right. Uh, go move it on to the euro. Not much. Same thing. It's also it's definitely lulling us into a nap. But mm -hmm. we do have a high here. Let's call that seventy two. We have a one two. Again, you know, here we go. We're same one, position. Two, same position. Yep. It yep. could run right. So, so watch that closely. I think longer. You know, you guys already know. The longer the consolidation, the bigger the move. So this has been going on for a bit. And considering the times and where the dollar is and everything else, watch it closely because th these things are ready to move. And um, I guess we'll talk about it next week or week after that. <laughs> See what happens. As soon as they start moving, you know, that's yeah, the yeah. thing. Which which we're very close, you know. Yeah. So here's the um, inside weekly bar. Again, you know, this is what I mean about the theme of all the major markets. You see, like another inside bar. Well, you know, you know, when you have an inside bar after a high, after the first drop, it's a super bearish sign. So if the low of this week goes and 108 goes, well, you know, I think we have a lot of good trading to the short side. It's a week of setups. It's a week. Yeah, there's a lot of things setting up. Mm -hmm. Um. Well, to the upside, I mean, there's nothing to do till we get above 110 or 111, right? right? So not much to talk about there. That's a given. Uh, being that we kind of finished these geometries, it's really 108. Well, it's really this week's low getting taken out, then 108 slipping through that will kind of set that up to the short side. Mm -hmm. What else do we have? Ah, you're going to cover natural gas, right? Yep. Okay. Yep. 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 Well, just it's, to say, yeah, it's pretty it's good. on the precipice, <laughs> yeah. And we talked about what happens when the markets are really quiet last week, you know, and 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 look what happened. Mm -hmm. And the other thing was um, the Hang Sang. Hang Sang, yeah. We talked about these ABCD going down into completion, and we did there. We got there in time. Yeah. Price, and you guys can see how that's holding really well. Um, if anything, we could possibly do a false break down into like 50, 15,775. That's a 50% of the square. And so, you know, here, what's really, you know, what's really interesting about that too, and that it, we made it in time. Mm -hmm. This is the week also where the stories are coming out now about like the bazooka stimulus is coming from China. Ah, oh, right, right. And like everyone's like, oh, you know, the, the, these markets are going to rip. They're going to rip. And it's funny how it comes out as we make the low in the ABCD. Right. And, and the critical place in the, um, you know, in the chart. Mm -hmm. Because not only that, we're also, what are the two, six, we're 252 bars. Right. You know, which is three and a half squares of 72 and one and a half down which is 108. So there it is right there, mm -hmm. you know, and that's next week also. <laughs> mm -hmm. And, and what a place to do a false break, right? Here's a low, here's a higher low. Yep. Oh my God. You know, we can, we can just gap down, do that and go get back up. And so this is, a, this is a critical time. We'll watch it. We'll watch this. I think it'd be fun to watch and see what happens in here mm -hmm. because that ties into a lot of other markets. So there's our little box. And what else? We looked at the Dow. That's all I got. It, it It's kind of a, so the overall theme is kind of, yeah, it was kind of a dull week, but within the dull week, you know, we gave us a lot of signs, you know, we, things are happening and things setting are happening. up. Yeah. Yep. They're, they're for sure. Up. So for sure. That's a big deal. A pretty familiar picture, isn't it? Yep. Inside bar. My eyes inside, like all the inside bars now. Right. Inside bar. Uh-huh. Are we going to make a lower high? Are we going to make a higher high with a false break? Are we going to settle above this half square and go, you know, another leg up? Mm -hmm. I mean, it's the same pattern in multiple markets. Right. And That's so what do we do when we don't have enough information or we're not sure? We wait, right? We wait for more clues. We wait for 
price action to give us enough information to where we can say, okay, the odds are in our favor that one thing's going to happen over another. Right. And, and so that's what we wait for here. So um, it's funny, you know, the cash made a new high, S&P cash, mm -hmm. SPX made a new high, NASDAQ, no new high, you know. Mm -hmm. And this was leading, remember, NASDAQ was leading. Right, right. So it's, it might still be leading is my what I was trying to get at. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's true. Let's check, let's check the weekly because we, the weekly you could see we're battling at a really critical spot here. Wow, yeah, yeah. Now, neither neither bar is going to clear it. So we, we're not going to get a resolution this week because even if we close above it, we're not going to get a resolution because we want to see a, you know, a full bar either sit on top or, or get stuck underneath here. Mm -hmm. And so we got to go to next week. Uh, interestingly enough, uh, we've got January 27th. We got a timing coming up there. Right, right. So um, we'll see. It's mm -hmm. it's the verdict is still out. We don't know, yeah, how this is going to play out yet. So we're watching, waiting for more information. Mm -hmm. um, anything else you want to add on the NQs? No, we're good. I think I think I mean it's kind of a similar story because we have a lower high, same pattern, same squares. We're just mm -hmm. waiting for actually, really, this week's high or low. We should really give us, you know, show us the hand. Absolutely. You no. Know? Yep. Let's, let's jump over to Bitcoin where things are a little more clear here. Look at this. Mm -hmm. How sweet right at is the that? Square, right at the square. Right at the square. Strong reversal. Full bar under today. Closing on the lows. I mean, that that's what you, what you like to see when you see these squares. Well, you know, uh, just to say that we called it out. Um, yes, sir. We did. We called right. it out. Last week, we were talking about how we squared out, you know, 90 by 120 from the September low. There you go. There's, there's divergences up here. Mm -hmm. And now we get the reaction. So this is, this is a, a sign of you don't want to be buying it right now, right? No. It doesn't mean it's going to crash. The, the next important spot is, is this half square, which is, call it, Around forty-two, three eighty, mm -hmm. can hold above that. Yeah, we could just go sideways. We could do another one of these, or another one of these, or see how it does all these sideways moves. But if we crash through that and get stuck below, then you're then you're looking back here, back around thirty-eight thousand. Mm -hmm. So, what that that's what you want to see when you square out and you. And you lose a square, right? You get stuck under it. Today's yep. bar is perfect. Yep. High on the square, ending up near the low, reversed. This is a rejection of the price up there for now. So that's Bitcoin. Anything else you want to add on Bitcoin, Barry? No, we're good. We're good on Bitcoin. Okay. Um, as far as the commodities go, uh, as Barry said, was been telling you not much happened, not much set up. We've got one to talk about, and that's natural gas, which we'll get to. Um, in the grains, the clean out move that we were discussing last week, you remember that Barry is possible it's coming. Yeah. Looks like it came in corn and soybeans. Wheat was a little weak, but it's still holding well above its its low. So those are okay. Um the softs, not much there. The cocoa short didn't work out. I, I sent something out on that, a little notification. You know, the risk we took was minimal, but it reversed. It went down hard, then reversed hard and and went through the square. And and you just you you know, you take your loss and you move on. Uh so let's uh let's jump into that gas and mm -hmm. break down why uh why it's doing well and looks like it can continue. What are the big developments that happened this week? Well, last week we were just below the full square. You know, we were pushing up and going to be tapping up against it. And, you know, we're mm -hmm. trying to say, okay, we wanted to try and see if we could clear that. Yep. Well, we've cleared it. Yep. You can see here. And there's your inside bars again. Look at that. We had the big up bar, two inside bars, and then up again. Here yeah. we go. Mm -hmm. So the next, the key is you can see the next important level is this half square in the 342, 343 area. Uh, we get above that, you know, then we're talking about four, which is what we talked about down here. 
right? That the, you know, the, the, the logical path, the progression would be get above this square, get above the half square, and then we're into the target at four. Right. This half square is obviously big because that's also around this previous high. You know, we stalled out there before. So mm -hmm. getting above there and, 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 and sitting on top of that half square and taking out those highs will will mean we're we're going to move. And here you can you can see the difference in the shape, right? Here's the first move, here's your second. This is that fast third move that we try to catch. Right, right. In all markets, not just in that gas, but that's that's the basic premise of why we want those thirds because they you get this the momentum kicks kicks in, you get these big arcs and, and you just get these these nice fast moves. To the downside too, right? Here's one. Oh, like, yeah. One, there's two, there's your three. So that it's why we look for them, why we try and isolate them, and that's that's what we focus on because that's the the best risk reward mm -hmm. uh, in the business. Let's look at um, let's look at the weekly too because I think the weekly is important. Uh, this two sixty seven, this half square at two sixty seven was a really important uh, level. Last week, we said, look, we were above it. We closed above it, which was great. But the bar, as you can see, was on both sides. Now check out this week. Yep. Full bar above. Yep. That's clearing it. So now it's coming up here and looking to challenge the full square and challenging those, you know, those <laughs> previous highs we saw in September, October, you know, up around 367, 368. So that gas looks good. Uh, it's, uh, it's doing what it needs to do to, uh, to move up. I don't know why it's going up like this. Maybe the, the cold weather that's, you know, gripping North America and the United States has something to do with it. We don't care what the news is. We just, you know, want to know the pattern going into the news. So, uh, maybe it's that frigid weather that's coming next week that this is anticipating. Um, anything else for you to add on that gas, Barry? No, I think we cleared everything perfectly. We talked about a couple of weeks ago, we talked about 265 being a critical level to get above. Mm -hmm. And we got above that. Then I think last week we talked about 298, what's on my thing, and that we got above that. Now it's really, what I have is 334, you know, is, is right at the high. We're right there now, yeah. yeah. Yeah, right there. So if we can get above that, uh, I think we can continue this. We could also correct for a couple of days and move on up, which is fine. Mm -hmm. so i think i think we're good we're off the we're off the mark off the block yep, yep. we're out and racing there again the rest <laughs> yeah again again good point the rest of the commodities you know barry did a good job covering crude and copper uh we talked about that key level in silver the fact that gold is you know winding up in a triangle but it's a very it's doing all this at a high level so it's very bullish on the softs, we're waiting for waiting for this pullback to be done in coffee. That'll set up again. Cotton continues to go sideways. Sugar's put in a temporary low. We want to see what happens off of that low. Uh, the grains, as we as we were discussing last week, you know, the, we kind of saw the clean out move happening there, and looks like we got it this week in corn and beans. Wheat holding up better, you know, the best of all three, but. There's going to be some opportunities there. A lot like the overall market and, and what you saw in Barry stuff, the commodities are all in sort of setup phase right now. They're 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 other than that gas, they're not really moving. They're either correcting or finishing up a correction or uh, starting a correction. So it's it's a they're in a spot. In, in the in the case of sugar and cocoa, we saw they were putting in highs. Um, so it's 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 a time to be patient, wait for the setups. Once the setup comes, remember these things move for months and sometimes years. Once you get a a, a big long term setup, mm. anything else you'd say in terms of how one can be patient and you know sit on your hands, so to speak, until these markets are are, are ready? Well, it, I mean, the only way to do that is. If you have some kind of a system or, or you have a technical approach to get there, I mean, that's the, really the only way. That's the thing that can anchor you so that you're not going to be swayed emotionally. You know, I mean, getting bored is kind of an emotional state, right? You're kind of in a bored, melancholic kind of a state. 
or right. you're anxious, you know, and you're anxious, you want to pull the trigger, you want to miss the trade. And I think even having a trend line saying, hey, the trend line has to break, like we give out a lot of levels, these levels have to break. That's, you know, that could you be used as some kind of a crutch or a system or a way or, you know, signpost before you act on something. So, mm -hmm. but, you know, you can't say enough about having a sort of a systematic approach. Rules that you follow. Rules, yeah, because it saves you just so much, you know, more, way more than the bank account or the, your trading account. Yeah, yeah, that's true. So just having some rules. And if you guys just watch our shows, go back and watch, I don't know, 20 shows, you'll, you'll be able to pull out enough rules. And even if you don't know anything and you make sure the rules are working, you back test it with your rules. And if they're reasonably profitable, well, there you go. You know? Yeah. But emotions and, then, and markets don't really work well. <laughs> no. And what keeps you from being emotional and keeps you from, uh, you know, trading out of boredom or whatever emotion you're, you're battling with is you can only, if you have a system with rules, you can only trade when your when your rules are met. Exactly. You know, when, when the, the, the different triggers for a trade are actually met, then you get in. Otherwise, you, you know, you watch. Of course, you know, that means we need to bring in another quality not everybody is thrilled with, which is discipline. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. You know, uh, so if you can be disciplined about all these things, then it's a lot easier. So if you have rules, you need discipline. Rules without discipline, you're going to break all the rules and just never get around to it. That's and true. If you, if you don't have proper rules, then don't trade. Wait till you have something in place that you can that you can trade. So I think that's, I mean, that's really the, after all these years, it seems like the only logical thing that really is consistent, just having a system, a systematic approach or rules or something else to help you, you know, trigger you into the trade. Yeah, that's that is the truth. Yeah, yeah. yeah and was, the, the the other truism that that you get from from having experience in the markets, and and you've seen it, Barry, and I've seen it, is that chaos follows the dullness. Mm -hmm. As sure as you know, you know, night follows day. Uh, if we have a period where, like this week or next week, is the same, or if something's going sideways. Don't get lulled to sleep because the chaos and the fast moves and the big moves generally um, will follow that sort of, you know, lackadaisical or lackluster period of price action. Absolutely. So next week could be a big week or we could, you know, we could chop around for another week. It's, it's okay. If it does, we're not in a hurry. What we're all we're looking for is price levels and, and setups where, we know the odds are in our favor that we're we're going to have a successful outcome. Right. But next week's not going to be boring. <laughs> <laughs> right. I just want to tell you that. You know, from, from, from your lips to God's ears. Let's, <laughs> let's have that happen. Yeah. Anyway, uh, listen, I hope, hope you all had a good week. Please, um, you know, help us grow the channel, share the, the videos, like, you know, ring the bell, do all the things that YouTube wants. We'd appreciate that. Um, rest up this weekend. It, it is a long weekend, so Monday's a holiday. So um, let's see what uh, what Tuesday brings, and hopefully it brings uh, good fortune to everybody. Thanks, Barry. Good good job on the show, and we'll uh, we'll talk next week. Thanks, Ben. Good coverage, and uh, yeah, we'll see you next week. Have a good weekend. Bye. Take care. Bye. Bye.